Hi everyone, it's me, Billy Vids, back again for another video, and as you can see by the title, and the, by the time of uh, year it is, considering the fact that uh, a Sasuke trailer has dropped, I would think, what better time to do the annual Sasuke 40 number predictions! With Sasuke 40 being announced like a couple months ago, and with the... Uh, and with the air date and the competitor list uh, releasing being inevitable at pretty much any day now uh, I would think what better chance to do it than now So we have a lot of competitors that we are going to be predicting today. In fact, we have 31 uh, Competitors that I think uh, deserve a spot in the in this next tournament. There are some uh, there are some shocks in predi predictions wise so, uh, yeah, I don't have any special guests with me this time. I'm doing this one solo, and genuinely, I'm excited to do it. So, let's just crack on with the first prediction. Okay, as previously done before in uh, many other places, we're going to be going from when these competitors went in Sasuke 39, excluding some that didn't compete in that tournament. Starting off with Katsuhide Torisawa, uh, the annual joke competitor uh, for the years nowadays, uh, especially in the Sasuke Rising and the Inui era. It looks like that Inui has basically just gotten progressively lower with Torisawa's numbers. He went from three in a, in a bunch of tournaments in like the 30s. Uh, up until 37 and then 38 he got number two and then 39 he got number one and because there isn't a number zero Then there's pretty much no other way you can go Unless um, and also we have to put a lot of emphasis on the fact that it is the 40th tournament And they do go all out with um, number placements as they have done in um, in previous years for like for stuff like Sasuke 20 and 30. So that is exactly why uh, with Katahide Torisawa I am actually not gonna continue the trend that everyone thinks he's gonna get three But I think he's gonna stick with the number one Mainly for the reason that that seems like the general consensus of where he's gonna go moving forward as the first person to attempt the course and not have a shot at being cut completely from the broadcast. And next up we have an amazing rising star uh, and a celebrity no less uh, in Koji Saikawa. Um, so Koji over here, um, he's, he's a very interesting competitor especially results wise. Every single time he's competed he's cleared stage one. He failed the uh, the Salmon Lad Naborian Kadari in 37, the Spider Drop in 38, and timed out on the second on the wall lift by mere millimeters in 39. And in terms of his number placement, uh, he was like mid 50s in 37, all the way down to 14, and then all the way down to nine in uh, Sasuke 39. And genuinely. It's a shot, it's it's a giant shot in the dark, and it's a long shot on whether any predictions of him will be right or not and my reasoning is that it seems like uh, Saikawa is consistent enough to just clear stage one be like one of the first guaranteed clears in the lower numbers in that area so that is why I'm going to give him the number 16 I think he's gonna um, I think he's gonna do better than he has all the uh, all previous times possibly making it to stage three now uh, it's well overdue, in my opinion, and I think that um, with him and maybe a couple more people, or maybe just one person, because who knows who can be in the bottom 15 uh, in their numbers. Uh, so, yeah, I would put Koji Saikawa as number 16. Next up, we have definitely a dark horse, I would think, in the competition. Uh, Yusuke Goto, the super fan. And the forest worker who's had some connections with Katsumi Yamada uh, in training in the past. So Yusuke Goto uh, pretty much just came out of nowhere in 39. But he did compete in 38 uh, and looked pretty strong up until the Dragon Glider where it malfunctioned and he was practically just stopped from doing any better. Um, he defied that in Sasuke 39 and actually made it to the uh, Salmon Ladder where he peeled off of the uh, Nabori after just completely discombobulating the uh, the second Salmon Ladder. 
But in terms of his number placement, he was 14 last time and he was 30 in 38. And I don't know if Inui will take any notice of this, if I'm going to be honest. But there is still potential for it. And I'm leaning towards a lot of that potential being his actual number, I'm predicting. Uh, and considering all those earlier facts about Yusuke being a super fan, he's had connections with many other competitors as well. He has amazing potential going forward. I think that Yusuke Goto is going to get the number 32. I mean, it seems reasonable, doesn't it? Like, just being a rising star, a, a dark horse, someone who definitely has potential to do well in stages uh, 2 and 3, maybe even 4 if we get to that. But, yeah, I think 32 seems like a reasonable option this time around. And now we're getting into more of the celebrity territory uh, with Johnny's junior member, Rene Sugeta. Uh, so, Sugeta is uh, a very unique competitor, to say the least. Uh, he, again, like Goto, started in 38, uh, getting the number 74, I think, and making it to the Salmon Ladder. Then in 39, he got number 20, uh, making it to the Wall Lift and timing out. But Rene Sugeta is... A celebrity, so Inui has to take that into account. So a lot of people are going to be watching, especially on the Japanese side, just for those celebrities uh, and more celebrities going down in the list over here that we have today. And in terms of Rene's number, um, obviously um, ratings play a big part in this. And so I would probably assume that Rene starts again with a lower number because I think that worked well pretty much for the first bit of 39 and I think that would be well for 40 so I think Rene Sugeta uh, should get 25 I mean it's not too high and it's also not too low and it's also not too far off from uh, the last time he did it so yeah I would think that 25 seems reasonable next up we have a newbie um, a newbie for all of these um, prediction lists and uh, hear me out when I say this Hideki Ajima so Hideki Ajima uh, was number 31 in the last tournament also being a member of the group Johnny's Jr having connections to people like Tsukada and Iwamoto and I actually think there's more to this guy than meets the eye like yes he filled the rolling log last time but I think with a bit more training he could actually do quite well in terms of stage 2 and even in stage 3 I, I don't even know at this point but, um, yeah, Hideki Ajima is a tough one to predict if he even comes at this time. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping he is. I want to see more of this guy. So, I, I would think that after Rene Sugeta gets 25 uh, and possibly clears or fails, maybe there'll be like a digest and a couple people cut or something. And um, leading on to that, especially with Rene's either clear or, like, fail on any obstacle, then I think that 28 for Hideki Ajima seems reasonable. Next up, we have a competitor with one of the biggest amounts of potential we've ever had in Sasuke as a whole. Hayate Kajihara. Now, Kajihara started out in Sasuke 38. No one really knew who he was, apart from, um... He competed in Spodan a couple of times. Basically, what Spodan is is a uh, is the um, basically the reboot of Sportsman, the very popular Monster Nine show, and he did really well there. I didn't actually know because I never really watched Spodan, but he was um, he was amazing at it. He he could get like 21 boxes on the Monster Box, I think. And after seeing Sasuke 38 and seeing a bit of Spodan, especially the ones he was in then I could actually see that he, he, there's a lot more to this guy than anyone thought. And he proved that in 39 by making it all the way to the cliffhanger dimension, being the first person to take down the swing edge, and basically being a surprise to everyone. Um, especially after coming short of making stage 3 in Sasuke 38, which already was a good accolade in itself. And I definitely think that Inui should capitalize on this guy, because God knows what could happen, especially with his results, but I'm, I'll probably get to that in the results predictions. So with his number, I don't think, I mean, considering that him and Saikawa are like best mates, they all do like action acting and stuff, he's like a gymnast and whatever, like martial arts, kind of that thing. And Kachihara does, um, does all of that. And the, and the guy has a friggin' 10-pack. 
So, like, he, already there's a lot out there uh, to be seen already. But, um, in terms of a number, I think Kajihara should get 40. Not to coincide with the fact that it is Sasuke 40, but Kajihara is, like, amazing at everything he's doing. He got, like, 41 in 38, 35 in uh, 39. And I don't think that he'll be that kind of guy to be having a run on the second day of stage one. Uh, so, yeah, I think 40 would work best for Kajihara. Next up, we have Daisuke Matsuda. Um, the guy who has the best homemade course imaginable, uh, taking everyone there just to have like a bit of fun and practicing on obstacles and stuff like that. But in terms of uh, Matsuda's results within the past couple tournaments, then there's a bit to talk about. The man started in like, what, Sasuke 32 failing stuff before the jump hang and fishbone and dub and like double pendulum, all that kind of thing. Then in Sasuke 38, he made it to the wall, showing that he does have potential to clear and set a, set a couple of age records. And in Sasuke 39, he actually failed the dragon glider, along with it being shown in a trailer, which really got me. But, um... In terms of what number I think Matsuda's gonna get, I think because he's part of the Inui Gundan, which basically means that he's gonna get invited back to every tournament and he plays a massive role in Sasuke as a whole now. So I think that Matsuda will get number 38. Mainly because it's not too high from where he was in the last tournament and it's also not too low. Okay. You guys are absolutely going to think I'm crazy for this. Kane Kasugi is on the list today. Yes, you heard me. Sasuke 8 finalist. And like, Banzuke Day's legend, Kane Kasugi. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm putting him on here. But in Spodan of this year, Spodan 2022, which was the 50th sportsman, he showed that he is not done. And he is a very strong guy, and he is still, he still has a bit of potential to actually come in this time. So, I'm not holding back my instincts, and I'm just saying that Ken Kasugi deserves a spot in Sasuke 40. But, um, thinking about the fact that he literally hasn't competed since Sasuke 8, and has only had appearances in, spo in Sportsman and Spodan since that time, then only the sports, the Spodan viewers will think, Oh, it's Kane Kasugi, but a bunch of the fan base will be excited to see him if he does return. But what number would we give him? I think that the number 47 would be a decent number for Kane Kasugi. Because it's not like he's number 98 or something. Like, it's not a massive, big thing. And because a bunch of people might not know who he is who've been watching Sasuke for not as long as others, like people have been watching since the Anui era started, then I think it'd be fresh to see him uh, as a number like 47. So yeah, King Kasugi, if he, the, by the slim chance that he does in fact compete in Sasuke 40, then yeah, I think that he, I think that 47 would be a good number to give him. Next up, we have our first group, uh, the the Kuro Tara or the Black Tigers. Um, featuring people such as Yoshiyuki, Yamamoto, uh, Soichiro Kawachi, and a bunch of other people, the group uh, being ran by Sasuke legend Katsumi Yamada. Now, in terms of where the Black Tigers will be, and who actually will be involved in the Black Tigers, whether it be two people like last time, or three people, uh, we genuinely have no idea, but... If we are going to think, I'm going to say only two are going to compete again. It's going to be Yoshiyuki Yamamoto and probably someone else. Um, if it'll be Soichiro Kawachi, I'll still be fine with that. But if it's someone else, then great. We'll have we'll have another opportunity to see what kind of people um, have the potential to live up to Yamada's uh, hopes and dreams of a Kansen Seiya. But where their numbers will be, I don't think there'll be a change at all. Uh, really, because I think the Black Tigers are up the best position they could possibly be in terms of numbers and that is like the 49 to 50 ish or the 50 to 51 so i'm gonna say 49 to 50 uh is probably the best they'll get if they if they are moved to the second day of stage one filming then that would be quite odd to see 
but I, c I can definitely see why they would do it. But like, yeah, I I would I would say that Yoshiki Yamamoto and one other guy would deserve 49 and 50 again. And next up we have um this group, the Akko Gundan, uh, featuring uh, Yoshinori Iza and four other people. Ran by uh, Mrs. Akko. Um, I don't remember her name. Cut that out. So the reason I've put the Akko Gundan on here is solely because of the fact that Yoshinori Iza is there. And if he was a lone competitor, then he would deserve a spot on this list today. But I would have to put him in the group that he is in. And considering the fact that the Akko Gundan has had the same um, numbers uh, both times they've competed in 38 and 39 being 51 to 55 Then I don't think there'll be a massive change and I think that 51 to 55 will be the same again And we have the last group of the three um, Here today we have the rampage from exile tribe uh, Featuring members such as Zin, Shohei Urakawa and Kaisei Takeshi now Hear me out. I am putting my last bit of faith, but that last bit of faith is a large bit. And for who? It's Kaisei Takechi. If you watched Spodan 2022 this year, he won the damn thing, was an absolute legend at it, and Shohei Urukawa was there, but we don't particularly talk about how bad he was. But, oh my god, Kaisei Takechi has potential, and I'm sick and tired of people saying, oh, he's a celebrity, he's gonna do trash, okay? It's gonna be crap. But no, it won't. I swear to God. Please, I'm, I'm gonna look like a complete idiot. So please, Takechi, don't prove me wrong. Please, just beat the damn Dragon Glider. Don't fail the quad steps. But, but before I get onto a whole other friggin' rant over here, um, I think there's gonna be a large change in numbers for the Exile Tribe, unlike last time. Because they got 56 to 58 last time, all the way down from the 80s in 38. But I think that they're going to be brought up a bunch because um, I'm, f I'm pretty sure Inui is going to put a lot of emphasis on the fact that Takechi failed the quad steps. H him and Katsumi Yamada being the only two in the tournament to fail the quad steps, actually. So I think they are going to get a massive rise in uh, numbers. And I think that 75 to 77 is the best bet to go here for the Exile Tribe. Next up, we have Jesus Christ... <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Uh, next up, we have Masashi Hiyoki, um, a guy who was a massive shock to literally everyone here. Like Hiyoki is already an amazing competitor, definitely stage three material, but he came out of nowhere in 39, being one of the most energetic and entertaining performances we've ever had uh, in the Inui era. And hell, maybe even in Sasuke, his his revival. Uh, from making, from failing the ball lift in 38 to making it back to the cliffhanger and beating the swing edge, bro, Hiyoki's a different person now, and I think Anu would definitely capitalize on that. And if Hiyoki keeps on training, then yeah, but that's for the results predictions. But in terms of his, in terms of his number, he got 59 last time, which I accidentally predicted right. Um, so I don't particularly know where he's gonna go because, as you guys know, with the um, with the whole Hiyoki thing. His numbers are all over the place nowadays. He can get 71 one day and freaking 4 the next day. I don't know. But I think one of the best ways to go about this is to give Hiyoki something like 61. Like he's gotten this number before, I think. And I think it's a and I think it's reasonable this time, considering the fact it's a bit of a boost uh, from his thing last time. And I don't think it's gonna be that high either because there's still um, he still has to be one of those competitors that clears early on in the pack and is one of the first to attempt stage two. So yeah, I think 61 is the best guess I have for Masashi Hiyoki. Next up, we have someone who only competed uh, in 38 and 39, but was all cut from 38, failing Dragon Glider, and making it all the way to the Sidewinder last time, Tomohiro Muto. Now, Muto over here is actually someone I think he can, that can be reckoned with. He's basically Nayuki Kitani, but younger. Um, he's like a trampoline performer, gymnast, all the things that Ikitani was, basically, but just not as good as him. But I think there's still some things to say about Tomohiro Muto. 
uh, make it, obviously, making it from the Dragon Glider in 38 to the Sidewinder in 39 is an amazing thing. And obviously the fact that he is mates with Ikatani, and there's probably not going to be another massive change, especially with Muto, because not a lot of people still know, still don't know who he is. He's just that one guy who made it to stage three and filled the um, filled the Sidewinder. And in terms of a number, I'm not particularly sure where to go on this. So I'm just gonna say I think a small jump from 71 to it to my prediction of 74 would be reasonable for Tomohiro Muto. It's not too big, and it's also not too, like, it's not too small of a gap either. Next up, we have um, a trampoline performer and former Olympian, uh, Shunsuke Nagasaki. Um, along with the trend of him being digested for the fourth time in a row, uh, from both 36, 37, 38, and 39, um, I genuinely don't know where to put him anymore because him and a couple of other people are in the same echelon as him where they just keep getting digested every single time and if they just fail the dragon glider, fishbone or anything in stage one if they don't clear. And if he does clear, then cool, he's gonna get clear digested unless he like friggin wins. So I don't know. Um, but in terms of, an, in terms of his numbers in the past, um, he went from like 95 or 94 and 36 to 80 and 37 to 70 and 38 and to 75 and 39. So I don't know where to put Shunsuke really because if in, if he just because oh yeah um, He actually confirmed in his 39 Paravi interview that this tournament if he fails the Dragon Glider again This is his last tournament if he fails that I'm sorry to break that news, but uh, if he fails the Dragon Glider again, he's gone. Unfortunately, it's very unfortunate. But I mean, I could, I could, I can definitely see why Shunsuke having failed a bunch of a bunch of times in Stage One, not making any progress. It is reasonable why on his part he wants to retire if he does fail it again. But in terms of his number, I don't think it's gonna be another big thing again. It's probably going to be in the same area, so I'm going to say 71 for Shunsuke Nagasaki. And we basically have the Shinsadai member of Shunsuke Nagasaki, Hitoshi Kano. Um, Sasuke 23 finalist and former jewellery maker um, has also had troubles uh, within the last couple of years. Um, his numbers have gone all over the place. He was somewhere in the 70s and 37, uh, he was 72 in 38, and he was 76 in 39. And I genuinely don't think that many people care about these guys anymore. And it's unfortunate too, because I definitely care about them, a bunch of other people definitely care about them, the hardcore fans do. But not a lot of people will know who these guys are unless they have like a VT and such. Which is never going to be mandatory if they're going to be digested. So like, I'm not I'm not sure where to put Kano. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put um, him one above Shunsuke who was 71. So I'm going to say Hitoshi Kano is going to be the same number as he was in 38, number 72. And next up, we have a competitor who is still going strong and actually broke the uh, world record for all the Stage 2 clear in Sasuke history, uh, Yusuke Suzuki. Suzuki is a very, um, he's a competitor who can still do well, but isn't a competitor that many people are holding their breaths for nowadays. Yes, he's still an amazing competitor. Yes, he's still Stage 3 material, but if he can just get past the Sidewinder, that would actually be quite... A sight to see if he's on the swing edge or hell even cliffhanger, but that's for results But in terms of his number as you would think last time what happened um, There was Kian Yutaka uh, After the all three of Shunsuke, Kano and Suzuki and if Suzuki fails stage one like he did in 38 Then it's probably safe to say that we're gonna see a three-way digest between Shunsuke, Kano and Suzuki if they all fail stage one so I'm just gonna say, um, in case of that, Yusuke Suzuki will probably be like 73 or something. Along with the two before 
it just seems reasonable if he does get digested and fails stage 1. Speaking of Kian Yutaka, guess who we have? We have Kian Yutaka! Um, mate of Kenji Darvish and the guitarist from his band, his band The Golden Bombers, and also famous for doing this. <laughs> is, um, it was definitely weird to see him in 39 after not competing in 37 or 38, but to come out of nowhere to do actually quite well, clearing in the Dragon Glider, making everyone on the set freak out, and actually making it to the double walk wall um, is definitely a sight to see nowadays. So, if Kian actually does come back, uh, then I'm pretty sure they're going to put a lot of emphasis on the fact that he made it past the Dragon Glider. And because of that, it's probably he's probably going to get like a higher number or something like that. So, I genuinely think that Kian Yutaka, if he does come back, is going to get the number 80. It's higher than last time. Uh, it's not too low of what I think could be possible if he does come back, so yeah, I think the 80 would be a fair bet for Kian Yutaka. Representing the female demographic over here in Sasuke uh, nowadays, Ayano Oshima. Uh, so Ayano over here is definitely a sight to see, especially in Sasuke. Uh, coming out of nowhere into Sasuke uh, after only failing after only failing like the wall in 31 or something. She came out of nowhere in Sasuke 36, clearing the Dragon Glider, making it to the wall, failing the Fishbone in 37, uh, failing the Dragon Glider in 38, and again failing the wall in 39. So, I don't know where to place Ayano if I'm gonna be completely honest. So, Ayano Oshima has, still has potential to clear, and I think because of that, and the fact that she is in the Inui Gundan as well, with a bunch of other people who get invited back every year, and is still uh, one of the few competitors that I still have faith in, um, she's definitely a force to be reckoned with, especially in the female area. Because unless um, Hikari Azumi, um, finalist of Kunoichi 9, and last woman standing of Kunoichi 10, comes back, I don't think Ayano... I think Ayano is the main female of the entire competition, especially in terms of how elite she is. So, I don't think there'll be much of a change in her number, and uh, she got 82 last time, and so I would think that um, a reasonable drop, only by one, I think 81 uh, seems reasonable for Ayano Oshima. Next up we have um, the forgotten um, Morimoto Sudai member, but it's really sad that he is forgotten. Um, Sasuke uh, car mechanic uh, Naoki Araki. Araki is um, is a competitor that got all cut from Sasuke 39, but made it to stage 3 in 36 and uh, failed the reverse conveyor in 38. And if it's not raining this time, then I think Araki is definitely going to make it back to stage three if the rolling on if the rolling log doesn't screw him over. Because I watched his Paravi run uh, from 38, and he is really really fast. And it definitely was the rain that screwed him over in 39. If he if Araki comes back, because there is a small bit of me that thinks that Araki may be done because of the rain uh, situation, but I don't think. But I think it's more um, more of a chance that he does come back than he doesn't get invited back. So I think that. Um, he's definitely going to get a drop in numbers, thinking that it's going to be something like... So, so for reference, he got 86 last time and was all cut. And because of that all cut, I think that the number 82 uh, would be reasonable to give Naoki Araki. Moving back to the celebrity uh, competitors this time, especially the group Johnny's Jr. Uh, Ryuichi Tsukada. Uh, Tsukada over here... Um, is done, pretty much, because unless he unless he clears stage one again um, in 40, then I think he's done, and I think he's just gonna fail the Dragon Glider uh, every single time, and the wall every single time if he doesn't uh, clear this time. So, I think that, um, so, Tsukada has been failing like crazy, but he still gets a lot of praise for being part of ABCZ, and, um, having connections to people like Iwamoto and even people like Rene Sugeta and Hideki Ajima who we mentioned earlier and also because of the fact that he is a celebrity competitor he needs to be hyped up 
uh, for all of the fans and even the J-pop stans uh, who watch the Sasuke things only for uh, only for these celebrities, then I'm pretty sure that there's still going to be a chance that he gets a higher number. And I think that 89 is the best way forward for Ryori Chitsukada. He got 88 last time, failed the Dragon Glider, but he's still a celebrity. So I think 89 is a reasonable prediction for Tsukada. And next up we have um, the penultimate um, celebrity on our list, uh, Hikaru Iwamoto. So this geezer is friggin' weird. <laughs> not, in, not in a bad way, trust me, but like, he's weird in, in terms of his results. Because um, he failed stage 1 for the longest time, then in 38 he came out of nowhere cleared stage one, but then failed the sand ladder. Then he um, timed out on the reverse conveyor last time um, because of his, because how tall he is. But like, <laughs> um, Iwamoto is one of the competitors who has massive potential uh, to go pretty far into stage three, I think. Not pretty far, but still pretty reasonable. And also the fact that he is like the most popular competitor ever, I think, because Iwamoto is like, one of the main J-pop people. Hell, probably even like one of the main, like the main J-pop person. Like I'm pretty sure Inui's trying to make him the main character of Sasuke, overthrowing people like Yusuke and Yamada even. So I think there's obviously going to be a lot of hype around Iwamoto again for the season, as there has always been. So um, I think uh, a bump from his number from 88 last time to number 90 this time is reasonable for Hikaru Iwamoto. Next up, we have our OG, um, our OG friggin' Sh Shinsadai member, um, Ryo Matachi. Our boy, Ryo Matachi. Um, he made a resurgence in his career yet again, uh, making it from the uh, Salmon Ladder, uh, failing that in 38, making it all the way to the Swing Edge uh, in 39, and still having a pretty high number. I think there is a lot more potential for Ryo to do well this time. And people even thought he was going to make it back to the final. Um, and I definitely thought that as well. I was believing in that. And I was very shocked when he failed the swing edge because Ryo is an unlimited cliffer, after all. And he has an amazing stage 3 part. And not to mention the fact that he beat the warped wall in rain, two warped walls, as a matter of fact, and also got over, or got over his, um, his weakness of the tackle. So that's definitely something to note on, actually. The tackle was his massive um, downfall in his career until now, but I'll get onto that in the results predictions probably in like a couple months or so once the date is released. Obviously, I definitely think there'll be a bump in Rio's numbers from 89, but I don't want it to be that high because I still want uh, like people within the um, within the 90s to still be arranged in ways. So I think Rio's number will be 91. Uh, 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 definitely a bump from his number 89, and also 91 seems more uh, better in Rio's case because he's still good, he's still very popular within the, the fan base, so yeah, I think Rio Matachi uh, will get 91. Next up, we have the person who finally cleared stage 2 after like 13 years of being on Sasuke, uh, Kaitaro Yamamoto. So. I'm just gonna go through his history with uh, results. He failed the jumping spider in Sasuke 20, the backstream in th in 29, uh, the reverse conveyor in 34, the spider drop in 35, the wall lift in 36, the wall in 37, the rolling log in 38, and he finally cleared stage two um, in 39, failing the sidewinder. But the thing is, I don't know if Kaitaro clearing stage 2 is a one-off thing. I don't know if him clearing is going to be a recurring thing nowadays, or if he's just going to keep on failing stage 2. So I'm still setting the bar incredibly low for Kaitaro in terms of results, but there's still um, a large bit inside of me that thinks that Kaitaro uh, is stage 3 material, hell, even final stage material, because he's one of the best rock climbers we have in Sasuke. And in terms of his number, um, I think uh, from the fact that he finally clears stage 2, um, I think a bumping his number uh, is definitely needed. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with his Sasuke 36 number, 93. 
not too much of a bump, but not too, uh, not too low of one. All right, boyos. If you know me, uh, my boy Tatsuya Tada is my favorite competitor at the moment. And for good reason, actually. Out of all of the times he's cleared stage one, he has made it to the third stage each time. But in terms of his numbers, uh, then, mate, I've got no idea where Tada's going in terms of numbers because uh, in Sasuke 36, he had like 73. In Sasuke th um, 37, he got 49 after getting to the vertical limit. Um, in 38, he got 95, which was one of the most reasonable bumps of all time, I think. And then in 39, he got 91. Uh, actually being the last person to clear stage one in that tournament and the last man standing So considering the fact that Tada got the best result in Sasuke 39 make it to the vertical limit beating the swing edge But also he's not the fastest he only clear he was the slowest time in stage one last time only beating it by 0.2 seconds left on the clock um, I actually think that Tada is going to get something that we've seen before. If you guys remember Kazuma Asa back in Sasuke Rising, like the beginning beginning of the era, um, he was incredibly fast, uh, but also he was um, he keep he kept failing the cliffhanger. And if you remember in Sasuke 30, he got 98, uh, just getting a lot of attention overall. Um, I don't think Tada's going to get 98 though. Um, so I think that Tada is going to get the same treatment as Asa and he's going to get something like 97. Tada is one of the most consistent and just well-performing competitors. You know that he's not going to screw up an obstacle unless it's just to do with him running out of strength. And he did run, run, run out of strength and just lost his grip on the vertical limit last time. So honestly, I think 97 is the best bet in terms of numbers for Tatsuya Tada. Right then. Next up, we have a competitor who we haven't seen in two years, uh, Speed Demon Jun Sato. Now, Jun was away in Sasuke 39, but he was still in the crowd because in May of 2021, or like April-ish of 2021, um, he tore his Achilles tendon, uh, making him not, um, not eligible to just do any Sasuke training or Sasuke free running at all. Um, within those times, but he has been healing up well and uh, I've seen on his socials He's doing very well um, In terms of recovery and I think um, we're at the point now where Jun Sato is good enough uh, to come back onto the course and Still be the man. He always was uh, the speed demon and he's also cleared stage one ten times in a row They have they will probably put emphasis on that if he comes back and they will definitely put an emphasis on the fact that um, he had a broken Achilles tendon. So yeah, you have to build up on that hype. And I think because of that, Jun Sato is going to get 95 uh, in Sasuke 40. It's reasonable because he got 94 in Sasuke 38. And I think a boost in his confidence with him getting 95 and also having a bunch of potential uh, coming back after his hiatus, uh, I think 95 is a good number to give him. Now moving on to the Sasuke All-Stars. Um, I just want to give a bit of news before I go on to them. If, if you guys were expecting Toshihiro Takeda to be on this list, then I am sorry to announce that he has officially 100% retired. Like, genuinely. He will be there in 40 though. He will be on the sidelines, but... I wanted to take into account the fact that um, he wa he wasn't going to be competing this time, and if he if I'm looking back on this and he has, then great on Takeda. I hope he does really well. If he does compete, on the off chance that he does, but I'm sorry to address that Toshihiro Takeda is not going to be uh, in Sasuke 40 competing, unfortunately. But moving on to the actual All Stars themselves, we have Shingo Yamamoto. Um, the only man with perfect attendance in Sasuke as a whole, competing in all 39 tournaments, and hopefully in the 40th too. Um, he failed the fishbone last time, or at least we think, because um, there was a lot of conspicuation about him failing the silk slider uh, with his foot barely dipping into the water. And I still do think that he failed the silk slider, by the way. But 
It's the 40th tournament. They're going to put a lot of emphasis on the fact that this is Shingo's 40th appearance, uh, which is just crazy. But he is 49. Uh, time is running out on him, but that's for results. And I genuinely think that because he's been there since the beginning, uh, they have got to put a lot of emphasis on the fact that um, this is a massive deal. And I think that Shingo Yamamoto deserves the number 94. He's a Sasuke All-Star. He, he's a mainstay in the 90s, I would think. And just overall, it seems reasonable. Oh boy, oh boy. Next up, we have uh, the memeable uh, All-Star himself. Um, the guy who lives for Sasuke, Mr. Sasuke, Katsumi Yamada. This guy... <laughs> This guy failed the quad steps last time, being one of the only two to do so. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with um, Yamada this time. Um, I don't know what number he's going to get. He is going to compete though because he did hint that 40 he will get redemption on those damn quad steps. So um, Yamada I would predict uh, just to get the same number as he did last time having 96. I don't think there'll be much of a change in terms of Yamada being in the 90s. Yes, he's he's Mr. Sasuke. They're gonna have to put a bunch of they're gonna have to put a bunch of attention on him as the 40th tournament. So yeah, 96 again seems reasonable for Yamada. And next up we have Makoto Nagano. Yes. So Nagano, I addressed uh, uh, on the channel earlier this year that Nagano has returned that he will be back for Sasuke 40. And it's also rumored that Makoto Nagano's 13 year old son will be competing this year. And if he does compete, then I am very excited to see that happen. But in terms of Nagano himself, he's 50 years old. Just saying that, with him being 50, like, I don't know what he's gonna do. I genuinely don't know what he's gonna do. But in terms of his, in terms of his numbers, um, I don't think because he rem because he competed in Sasuke 38 and he was just like, okay, 2020 is the worst year of all time. I'm going to brighten everyone's spirits. Um, and he gets 98, which is very respectable, actually. And it's Sasuke 40. Nagano is a champion. He is possibly the most famous Sasuke competitor of all time, besides, like, maybe Yamada and Yusuke nowadays. But it's Nagano. You can't just defy the fact that it isn't, okay? So, I think that Nagano, um, in terms of his number, I genuinely think uh, there's not going to be a change in where he is since he was in 38. So, I think that 98 for, for Makoto Nagano is very reasonable this time around. Next up, we have um, my boy, um, fellow drummer for the Golden Bombers. Uh, I mean, I'm not one. But, um... The Golden Bomber drummer and celebrity Kenji Darvish. Uh, now, Darvish had an interesting deal last time, uh, <laughs> failing the rolling. I don't know if that's gonna have an extra emphasis on his number or not. It probably, it probably will, um, but probably in a negative way. And it's because because it's Darvish, um, he's not the most popular competitor, but still a bunch of people like him, especially in Japan. He's still obviously gonna be in the 90s, but I don't know where. And I definitely think that it's going to be lower than last time because of his rolling hill fail. And probably he's probably going to be just brushed aside in 40, unfortunately, unless he clears. So I think that Kenji Darvish is going to get number 92. Yes, it's a shock, but I, th I genuinely think that Darvish will get 92 because of the fact that, like, He's, he's got 93 before in Sasuke 38 after he failed the Dragon Glider. And this is an even lower low than the Dragon Glider. So I think 92 is probably one of my safer bets in terms of numbers for Darvish. Next up we have um, the climbing shoes maker and the head of Paradra Climbing Gyms, Tomohiro Kawaguchi. He has failed the wall three times in a row. Uh, he started out by getting 99 pretty much every single tournament until Sasuke 38 where he got 96. And then he was brought up again for 98 in Sasuke 39. But it's not going to be like that this time, I don't think, unfortunately. So, like, I don't know how to base this, man. 
I genuinely think that um, Tomo over here is gonna just and also like Shunsuke if he fails uh, the wall again then he's retiring um, they both have similar things going on so Tomo um, will probably almost certainly be retiring if it's raining then he's dead <laughs> pretty much I would think but in terms in terms of his number then I think it's gonna be an even lower low than last time um, and then the last couple of times I think that Tomohiro Kawaguchi is gonna get the number 88 I'm sorry it may be a shock but I'm thinking yeah it seems reasonable at the end of the day it's Tomohiro Kawaguchi Yes, he's still and he's still part of Sasuke nowadays, but like, it's Tomo. He's lo he's aging. He's now 41, I think, or still 40, and and I don't think it's gonna work out as best as you think it's gonna work out. So, yeah, unfortunately, I hate to do this, Tomo, but 88 seems like a fair bet, honestly, in my opinion. Next up, we have the. First two times champion and leader of the Shinsadai, a uh, legendary Sasuke competitor Yuji Arushihara. So Yuji also failed the wall last time. So it seems like Yuji has taken over Tomo's place and is now uh, the shoe in for 99 nowadays. Uh, mainly because of the fact that he's the other two time champion along with Yusuke, uh, which we'll get onto uh, momentarily. I, I bet you can't guess what Yusuke is going to be. But like, yeah, U Yuji is still there, and I genuinely think that Yuji still has it in him to do extremely well. Yeah, I I'm gonna go with the trend that he has had for the last um, the last couple of tournaments. Um, he got 99 in Sasuke 38. He got 99 in Sasuke 39, and I do believe that he's gonna get 99 in Sasuke 40. Okay then, so. This guy, I don't know if you've heard of him or not, um, but this is just a small deal about this guy, I don't know, I don't know if you've heard of him, but it's called Yusuke Morimoto, friggin Yusuke Morimoto, um, yeah, he failed the wall last time, <laughs> so, um, yeah, Yusuke Morimoto, he did fail the wall, wall uh, last time, mainly because of rain, um, like, we all knew that it was probably going to happen watching it live after seeing a bunch of people just fail continuously. Um, like, we all knew that going up to the wall, we all knew that it was inevitable. It was more inevitable that it was going to happen, that he was going to fail, than it wasn't. We were just like, okay, there's this one bit of hope that he was going to make it, and he just didn't. Which, um, which is sad, honestly, because Yusuke probably would have made it to the final. Um... Or, like, made it to stage 3 almost, so, yeah, you know. Uh, but in terms of numbers, it's the most obvious thing ever, if I'm going to be honest at this point. Um, he's gotten number 100 more times than I can actually count. Actually, I can count, hang on. He's gotten the number 100 eight times before, uh, being starting from Sasuke 30 and then having it from Sasuke 33 onwards. So I think this will be his ninth time getting the number, I'm sure it's not a shock to any of you, I think that Yusuke Morimoto will get the number 100, or 4,000, Yusuke Morimoto will get the number 4,000 as the 4,000th competitor to ever take place onto uh, the Midori Armor obstacle course. And yeah, with all that being said, that brings us to the end of the Sasuke 40 number predictions. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I've been recording for like 58 hours, my throat is gone. Um, these um, results probably aren't going to hold up that well, but if they, um, if they do come out, if some of them do come out as true, then amazing, yay. So um, yeah, thank you guys for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, stay tuned for more Sasuke 40 content coming soon, maybe like saying stuff about trailers, stuff about news, and definitely the inevitable results prediction, uh, which will definitely be coming out uh, when the tournament is released, and like before that. So uh, yeah, just thank you guys for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye! Down, down, down.